11 o'clock, so we're going to go ahead and get started here. Uh, welcome to Social Media 201. How many of you are here from the Social Media 101 session? Yeah, okay. Awesome. I'm sorry? No. Oh. Um, I'm going to kind of let this be a group geared conversation, so I'm not going to stand up here like, hi, this is social media, this is what we're doing with it. I kind of want to see what you guys know and just kind of answer any questions you would have, get some conversation going based on where we're at as a group and just kind of go from there. So um, we all know what social media is, I'm assuming. Obviously Twitter, Facebook, uh, Foursquare, all those fun little, little things. Is there anything in particular that anybody, like any application for instance that, that anybody's Got some questions on? Yes. Um, I have, uh, I run a nonprofit organization. Okay. And um, one of my employees started setting up all these things, and I was trying to figure out what they set up. Uh, because in one case, I guess, based on the number of people you have, you have like a squad, or you have, do you know what? What that is, or how I how I manage that, or? I'm not entirely sure. <coughs> It's well. If it's it's like I think it's like a uh, a cause page on Facebook. Okay. And um, you build the community through you know this cause page, and it's a way to raise revenues through the. Um, if you know about this, go ahead. Yeah, I I actually am transitioning out of a uh, nonprofit, and I set up a uh, basically social media outlets to to channel in traffic for online donations, and um, yeah, that's exactly that's you know like a. a um, I blame Friday for this. <laughs> Friday night, specifically, me and Greek. Um, and those 10 percent beers for, for getting wars now. Um, but but uh, what I did was, you know, you have a website, right? You obviously have, you know, online donations everything. So you have these, these social media outposts, and you're trying to generate traffic back in towards your site. <coughs> so your question really is dealing with, I'm assuming, a specific social media outlet, or? Yeah, it's, it's on Facebook. It's a cause page. OK. Um, and uh, there's actually a group that, for a fee, will take, you know, they'll, they'll manage the donations directly on Facebook so that you don't even have to go back to your website. I would prefer to direct them back to my website yeah. where this yeah. company yeah. doesn't take that's a cut of the money of my donations. Don't, don't listen to those people there. That's a scam, pretty much. Because with Facebook, you have 99.1, which is 90% of the people are going to be a lurker anyway. 9% might actually have some input. And that one percent of the traffic that you actually get are going to be actively involved. Go back to your site. Mm -hmm. So it takes a large amount of work to. That's the thing. Like I'm still up, and that's what my, one of my questions will be: is the validity of actual Facebook being marketable or worthwhile for you know business? You know, uh, especially like B two B instead of you know business to consumer. I think. Sorry to and I guess I'm trying to figure out how I hook up this cause page to my organization's profile page and how all these different pieces link up. Because I created a profile page for the business, but somebody else created this cause this page. Cause page. Um, and now they have, like, I guess I have you know, 700 people who have joined my cause, and I have no idea how to communicate with them. Um, Honestly, I really don't have the information for you, unfortunately. But if you talk around, exactly, if you can talk to people who are here, this is one of the nice things about PodCamp is that I don't know. I, I would be completely honest. I have information that I'm going to share as far as the, the social media stuff. But I will be the first to admit there's a lot of stuff that I don't know. For example, <laughs> I, I don't have this information. It's something that I don't deal with on a day to day. I'm unaware of it. Network people. Answer questions. Okay. We're good to go. Your question now. Let's let's go ahead there since you. Yeah, I was. I mean, if, if, if you know, all the different you know blogs. You know, one day you know, Facebook is great for you know for for a social media outlet and SEO, and then you know another day you know the, you know Facebook is worthless. I I really question the validity of Facebook specific. I, I know it might work for business cons to consumer, but the business to business. I, I don't. I, I mean, I'm, I'm questioning like, what do you think? Honestly. My feeling about Facebook is more that it's a social tool for individuals. Businesses, like you said, can kind of, you know, individuals can become fans of business pages. Makes 
that business to individual thing work well. I'm kind of with you on the business to business. Yeah, thing, like like I work for a web design development company. Right. If if we're trying to you know launch you know a CMS, mm -hmm. it, it it doesn't almost make sense to. I mean, should we even maintain that Facebook page, or is it wasting my time as doing SEO and social media? Wasting because it takes a lot of time to actually have a great you know, outlet for Facebook, it yeah. takes a lot of time. Oh, absolutely, I understand, because you have to actually maintain, you have to yeah. actually, you know, go through, and, and it, it does. Um, my thought on it, and again, this is just my absolute thought on it, is that businesses, especially when they're dealing with other businesses, from a business standpoint, if I am looking at a business, I'm not going to go to Facebook. I'm going to go to their website. Mm -hmm. If you have your... Facebook integrated through your website, I might actually click on your Facebook through your website, but I'm okay. not going to vice versa. Okay. For so, the most part, because I'm not going to look you up on Facebook as, as a company. So still have it? Because, uh, or, or not. I mean, that's the question, really, for B2B. And essentially, I mean, that's, that's your, that's, your, that's, your prerogative. Like okay. I said, I would link it from my business website but it's and a, then, then have it there so that if, if I'm a consumer that happens to stumble upon your website, I see your Facebook, I can then go to your Facebook and say, hey, this is awesome. But again, the B2B, you're not really going to get a whole lot better. But at the same time, though, it's like a double edged sword. sword. You need to have it, but at the same time, though, you're wasting time maintaining it, having that great content. <laughs> but you don't really need it then because you have individual consumers. I mean, it might, uh, you know, occasionally grab a sell from an individual, but for the most part, it's, it's worthless, but you still need to have it. Yeah, and it's, why do you need to have it, though? It, it, it's like. It's what all cool kids are doing. It's, it's what all, yeah, exactly. Who makes the decisions? At that company that you're trying to reach, an individual. It, yeah. I mean, it's still people. It's, it's still mindset, people. On the Facebook mindset, B2B may not be the right place. I guess it depends on what industry you're in. But okay. wouldn't it make more sense to focus your efforts on those niche blogs or LinkedIn? Or no, I, like I agree. Yeah, LinkedIn, I think, would be a very good community. Oh, if, I'm, yeah. if I'm looking business professional stuff, I'll go through LinkedIn. LinkedIn is essentially, in my again, my dumbed down terms of it, LinkedIn is the Facebook for businesses. No, that's a, that was a good down, dumb down turn. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the way that I, I, I generally look at it. Um, so yeah, it's, you have to make that call, unfortunately. Yeah, that's horrible. I, wish, I, I was hoping that you would have that, you know, well, let, let, this let, is it. You let know. me put it to this way. When I was looking for sponsors for this year's event, I approached my company because I love where I work, and I'm not just saying it's on camera. I, I love where I work. I love the people that I work with. And if they're going to give me money, okay, I'll, I'll take it. You know, So I'll ask them for it. Not a problem. I have no problems with it. When I went in to have the conversation with the, um, with the partner of the company, um, I, I work with him. I know him. So it's you know, a day-to-day -day basis. I see him sort of situation. We're, we're comfortable with each other. His very first question for me is, what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> so I started pitching him on the business aspects of sponsoring Hot Camp, you know, what, what social media is doing for business, and he's straight up, you know, I don't want to hear that, he's like, I'll be honest, I hate Twitter, I hate Facebook, I hate all of that stuff, I have no use for it, it's not, you know, is it, I, I just have no interest in it, I like you, I will sponsor you, <laughs> so that was essentially the conversation that we had, but he, as a business person, hates Twitter, hates Facebook. But he understands the, the importance of it, though, at least, right? He's coming around to it okay. primarily because I've been involved with, with PodCamp. So, and it, essentially, it's been around the office to the extent that I've been doing stuff. Okay. Yeah. I mean, not yeah. at work, on work time by any means, but it's been in, in the conversation, essentially. But, um, yeah, he just absolutely hates it. Business owners, I mean, it kind of, it's... Look at the difference between Facebook and MySpace. How many people actually use MySpace anymore? No. Seriously, anybody using MySpace? See, this is what I'm saying. It's one of those situations. Why don't we use MySpace anymore? I think that might be, you know, a, a good segue into. I'm not gonna do this anymore. But like, another question is, you know, convincing your employers to realize that these 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 outlets, these social media tools, are effective. Like. Do you have, I mean, obviously you've already been talking, so do you have any kind of like setup to, you realize that they're important, and yes. you want to get to an employer, yes. or, or your boss, or you know, the higher ups, 
And yeah, I've, I've already got this nice little conversation set aside for after potty camp because I've been focusing so much on getting the event ready that it's just been like, okay, this, I'm going to put this over here in this little pocket. I'm going to just, this is what I'm going to go to my boss and say, you really should get involved with this. This is where everything is moving. But yeah, and that's, that's ultimately what I'm doing. But getting back to the, the MySpace thing, why doesn't, why don't people like MySpace? I'm, I'm seriously, why don't people use MySpace anymore? It's too jumped up. It's like all spammy, but it's not. The usability of it is weird. It's just, I can get the same thing and connect on Facebook and MySpace. I see MySpace for more entertainment, like people uploading their music and things that they're doing. And if I'm looking for that, I'll, I'll maybe peruse MySpace, but my profile's just been sitting there untouched for a year. So. I think it really just falls down to marketing. Um, MySpace, if you think of it, you think of 14-year-old emo girls taking pictures and bands, and you know, and, and the ability, I, I think Facebook was really smart in not letting people personalize their pages in the beginning so much. You have that clean, white background, and, and um, I, I think eventually, it's, it's, you know, people get bored with things, but, you know, and it's going to be another fallout. Like, we're not going to, it's not always going to be Facebook is the well, way. Everything is always yeah. emerging. I mean, there's, there's new things that are coming out every day. We had, uh, heck, I can't even remember the program. Bright Kite. Yeah. Anybody here familiar with Bright Kite? Yeah. Now there's Foursquare. Why do I use Bright Kite? So I mean, it's it's kind of an evolution process that this person takes you know this concept and then it expands. I mean, that's the nice thing about social media is that it's out there. People are using it. People are learning, and people are adapting it. Um, you know, doing the whole business thing. You know, it's, it comes down to people have separate profiles for business Twitter accounts versus personal Twitter accounts. Angela, you mentioned that you had multiple Twitter accounts. <laughs> so, what what do you use your different Twitter accounts for? I, I'm seriously curious. Okay, well, I'm a teacher, mm -hmm. but I write. Okay, and I write a lot of a, a lot of different things that might not necessarily be appropriate for the students that I teach. So I, I, I have different personas. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, I have different followers for different things. Like, my students might follow me under Miss Stubbs, but then my sorority sisters, you know, you just need different different areas. Like, I, um, for instance, I have a sorority sister who's an author. Mm -hmm. um, she was starting out and then she published her book, she started accumulating friends, and now she has the iPhone app. And she has like the maximum amount of followers, and now she has like her books come out on ebooks, and I mean, people are just eating it up. So for her, Facebook works, Twitter works, and that really works for her. You know, so I guess it just really depends on you know, what area you're in. And I was just surprised. I said, you have an iPhone app? You know, like, how did you do that? And she's just like, I'm riding this wave. This is this is what it is right now. This is what's hot. She's like, and I'm using what's hot to make sure that it promotes my business until the next thing happens, then I have to jump on that one. Oh, I think that you just said a key word right there. It's hot and iPhone app. My iPhone goes everywhere with me. I have it sitting in my pocket right now. I mean, I can pull it out, and I can. I, I have my little folders. I, I love that they add the folders, and I have my social media folder. Mm -hmm. I have my Twitter client. I have my Facebook client. I actually have a MySpace app client in there. Um, my Foursquare is in there, and I have a couple of others that I, I will occasionally use that are all in this little folder that I refer to frequently. Um, it's just astounding how easily and readily accessible this stuff is. I mean, I, I literally pull up my phone and within two seconds people know this is exactly what I'm doing. Which is kind of cool. It's also kind of frightening. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot of different things out there as far as things are concerned and it's ever adapting. Um, what programs you know, do people use? I mean, obviously we've talked about Facebook a little bit. We've talked about MySpace and, and how it's you know relatively been phased out. I like you. You talk. I'm so sorry. Everyone <laughs> no, else is like, I feel bad. Like I hate being I hate 
picking up here like a teacher. I, I seriously like conversation better. No, no, sometimes, I, sometimes I the it. best way. Like I feel like you know you get you know you don't have to teach nearly as much. You know, <laughs> I, I understand. You know, Go ahead. Um, uh, I love Twitter. I mean, if, if if Twitter was a female, I'd probably date her. You know, <laughs> I love Twitter. It's it's so easy to just throw out a question in 140 characters, and as long as you're following influential people, based on any area that you're actually, you know, most people are on Twitter, you know, especially the social media and the SEO kind of individuals. But a lot of other people are on there too. So you throw out a question and you're, you know, if they're following you and you're following the right people, you're bound to get, you know, an answer. I mean, when I was working on profits, um, I worked on um, tweets giving and everything like that. Okay. And, um, you know, it's, it, it was just great, really just networking with a, a ton of individuals to, and, and, and basically through Twitter, they were able to raise Thirty thousand dollars over three days, basically, which which is Astounding. I mean, uh, yeah, it's it's amazing through just a microblogging site. I that I mean, obviously they, they were funneling like tons of you know retweets and they had a you know an actual website, but their main way to get the message out was through that, and I, I love it. Sorry, that was a, a, <laughs> a rant tangent. So. Yes, in the back. Um, well, I, I have to admit I've never done Twitter, so that's why I'm here. Oh, okay. I, I, I'm a small business owner and we sell tropical fish. Okay. So I'm trying to think of, I mean, I have Facebook, but I don't, like, what would I do with Twitter? What would you, uh, I, mean, I, I would think I'd talk to people like we got cool and efficient. Is that, what? is that what you do? I don't think like, Honestly, that, that wouldn't be a bad thing. Um, like, I know that the Goody Truck, for instance, uh, they deliver baked goods and they're in a truck. They tweet their location so that people know where they are when they're in downtown Pittsburgh, and people can actually go, and that's how they sell their product. So you actually have to follow your Twitter feed in order to know where they're at. Um, like you just mentioned about getting a different type of fish in or something like that, you can actually do that, and if I'm an enthusiast, I see that tweet, I then go, oh, I've been looking for one of those. I know where to find it now. And more likely than not, there's not a whole lot of people out there who are tweeting that. And then, I'm sorry. There, there are certain things you do on Twitter. Um, putting a hashtag before a, a word, um, it's a number sign, makes that be something that what people will find on searches. Yes. So there are all kinds of tricks and tools to actually getting your message out um, you know, a little bit more efficiently. There's a great book, Twitter for Dummies. I read all the dummy books. There you know. go. Um, Twitter marketing <coughs> for Dummies, I really recommend it. It has a lot of good tips. I'm sure that's in the book, but like, how do you get followers? How do you actually get followers? Just read the book and tell them. Honestly, there's the nice thing about it is, too, is that you're here at this event. Everybody's, you know, name tags have an at with their Twitter name. If I meet somebody who I'm having a nice conversation with, I'll follow them on Twitter. And that way I can continue conversations with them through the Twitter feed. Um, the other nice thing about Twitter is that even though there are people that I don't follow, my I recently unblocked my, like I was a locked account that you had to actually request to be my friend before you could see my tweets. Um, organizing PodCamp, I figured that was kind of not a brilliant idea since people would need to be getting in touch with me for things and they wouldn't be able to DM me or they wouldn't be able to, to get in touch with me unless I followed them. So I unblocked my Twitter account, which was just an amazing, <laughs> freaky experience for me. Um, I can go into my apps either on the website or on my Twitter on my iPhone, and I can meet new people there too. You know, people who have either seen a retweet that somebody's retweeted something of mine, or that you know they've seen my Twitter stream come up in a friend's Twitter feed or something like that. And it's just networking, absolute networking. And I have amassed a whole group of people who are following me. Many of whom I've never honestly met, but through this experience, it just builds itself. Mm -hmm. And if you, you know, if you're talking with people this weekend, you know, okay. Last year when I did the um, social media 101, after my session, I actually went and helped a woman set up a Twitter account. <clears throat> she had been adamantly against it after my session. She was like, "How do I do this? I think I'm ready." She's been tweeting ever since. I still follow her, and you know she tweets on a regular basis about various different things, and she's just absolutely blossomed and grown into it. So, if you'd like to have more information, we can talk after. <laughs> um, I 
keep hearing this hashtag. Yes, I'm glad someone said it here because I couldn't figure out what they were saying this last one. Ah, okay. So let's say, you know, I'm new to Twitter mm -hmm. and I want to sort of get the, the people who were here. Do I just, is that like a search engine or? Um, essentially, yes. Okay. And what you can do is we have asked everybody, and even our materials here, Hashtag PCPGH5, I believe, but we're telling everybody the yeah. hashtag. Let's double check that. Yes, PCPGH5? Yeah. The hashtag? Yeah. yeah. Tag your content right here on the front, uh, down at the very bottom. Okay. Um, PCPGH5. So if you actually go to your hashtag search, PCPGH5, anybody who has content from Twitter that they have at Twittered anything regarding this event will be in that. You're going to be looking at thousands. Okay. Tweets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll warn you that now. Thousands okay. of tweets. Okay. Um, because we have been tweeting PCPDH5 since we started organizing okay. for this year's event. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that was even to some regard last year after last year's event. We were preemptively looking forward to hashtag PCPDH5. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, that, that'll give you a, a good place to start. Mm -hmm. um, Twitter just released their, their new. Yeah. They, they updated it basically. Okay. They, have, they have a new interface. Um, because a lot of the times people do it locally and they want to get into that because they're, they're stating there's so much traffic going to Twitter, but at the same time they're, they're missing out on the, the mobile applications because they can't track that for whatever reason. Um, and with, with the hashtag, they're making it more uh, prevalent or easy to search that. So, you, I mean, they have trending topics, which are, are the most popular. But also, um, you know, I, I do discussions, um, you know, we do like roundtable discussions through Twitter, through hashtags, you know, like a, a social media, you know, you do like SM64 or something and, you know, talk about that kind of stuff. But, um, so you can do those kind of things. But um, I think now it's going to be easier if, if, if you're a business owner or, you know, um, you work for a specific business to search for, for rel like relevant hashtags. Okay. And then... Um, you know, uh, for with mobile applications, you can usually follow that specifically. So you would have your normal follower list, and then you would have the hashtag, like whatever it would be, red widgets. Everyone that actually uses that hashtag, you're going to get an update about that. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah. The, the only I was just going to say the the site where all this is happening is called search.twitter.com. That's where you put in the hashtags and find it. And then you can take that a step further. There's a website called metvibes.com, okay. and you can set everything up on a dashboard. Um, I work with Cranberry Township, so it's very important um, for us to understand, get the pulse of the community, and know who's talking about us, and you know, that kind of thing. On metvibes.com, you can set up the dashboard, and I have one section for any time Cranberry is mentioned in, um, on Twitter, any time Cranberry is mentioned on YouTube. And I have searches, when I bring that up in the morning, I have live things, I also have Facebook, our Facebook page, our Twitter, and, and it just puts everything in one place, so when you open it, it's efficient, you know, who's talking about you, um, and that kind of thing, so you can address things. And then a second place, socialmention.com, I believe it is, um, actually will tell you, give you kind of rankings about, you know, or most people saying your thing is positive, negative, or neutral. Which like Toyota used that oh, yeah. a lot whenever you know, they were going through their major thing. Mm -hmm. How many comments are now coming in in a positive way? You can get a lot of and that cool as far as marketing would be concerned. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go with you over here. Actually, you talked about. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, I have another suggestion uh, on the subject of Foursquare. Okay. I'm the marketing director for Double White Grill in the South Side, and we own Beehive and Tiki Lounge, Love Lounge. Um, something great that you can do to boost your business is sort of like a reward program. If people check in and four square, say a double white grill. Um, we can implement a special, like, oh, you just checked in, you get 50% off of the year. Um, eventually, the more you check in somewhere, you can become mayor of that place. If you're a mayor, then we might offer a special, like, show the bar to me, or you just become the mayor of double white grill and four square, so you now get a free appetizer. Um, it's a great marketing tool. It's not a thing as Facebook or Twitter, but it's getting there. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a fun way to talk to your friends. I also run a site called jamesarepony.com, which is like Pittsburgh nightlife, so it's good for, I've just checked in at Brillabox, I've just checked in at Belvedere's. People follow me to see where I am to know where the parties are, so. See, I like that. that it's called Foursquare. 
Is that not the last one you say? Oh, oh yeah. newsandparty.com is the same site. So, yes, yeah, so, since you brought up Foursquare, that is one of my favorite things about Foursquare, is that um, if I check into a place, I've, I've done this a couple of times, I was kind of freaky. I'll check into a place, and then when it shows you who else is here, I'll see friends of mine. I'm like, where are they? I'll like search the restaurant. I'm like, yeah. oh, so you came out without me, huh? <laughs> just just kind of harass a little bit. But it's, it's kind of one of the fun things about Foursquare is that you can do that sort of stuff. And it's about the mayor. And I'm sorry, another great thing before I forget about Foursquare is once you figure out, like, if you say you're a pod king, you can shout it out on your Twitter and on your Facebook. So it's a great marketing tool that, um, hey, I'm a double white girl right now, and you shout that out to Facebook. It's awesome for us because everybody's like, oh, where is this person? They're a double white girl. Must be cool. I'm going to go there. So, great marketing tool for businesses. Yeah, the other nice thing about Foursquare is that they actually have trending now. And uh, as I'm pulling it up, because I realized that I had not actually <coughs> checked into PodCamp yet, um, it actually pulls up at the very top of it, trending now. Um, Consult Energy Center has 40 people. We're beating them out with 77 who have checked into Foursquare at this point. So if you haven't checked in, check we're, in. We're, we're, we're going for the super swarm today at 250. <laughs> yeah, I was say, are we a flash mob already? Um, I think we may be. We got the swarm bench. Yeah, we got the swarm bench. Uh, right. We did that last night at Alpha Low. <laughs> but, uh, sorry, I'm over here. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's cool how much you can do. And it's, I can honestly say that Twitter is my reason for being here. Because Twitter is what, Twitter was kind of the gateway drug. Twitter got, <laughs> Twitter got me into Facebook. Facebook got me into you know, this other stuff. And then here I am. And I'm being all sorts of social. Well, I, I was going to say, I think it's really interesting because uh, I'm like, like, I'm anti Twitter. I hate Twitter. Okay. Oh, yeah. I, I'm a Facebook She's a girl. She's a beautiful mistress. I'm just, sorry. Just <laughs> <laughs> um, I just think it's interesting, too. I, you know, to your point in the beginning, you know, we have to use Facebook, we have to use Twitter. Like, who says we have to do that? And the consumers and businesses? Well, I understand that, but I think, like, similar to, you know, advertising, television advertising in the beginning, where there was only network TV, and that was mass, and that's where I'm going. Now we're seeing Foursquare, we're seeing these kind of like little niche things where, from a business to business perspective, you can go in and really kind of target and segment. You know, to your point, when you have all the different Twitter accounts that you're segmenting and you're speaking to those different audiences. And I'm not saying that Facebook and Twitter don't have a role in it. I just think that I think we're going to be seeing that role get smaller and it's going to be segmenting out and it's going to be more overwhel overwhelming than it is right now. But I think from a Twitter perspective, it has its purposes, right? It's a great customer service tool, it's a great listening tool, it's a great promotional vehicle because you don't have all the stupid Facebook <laughs> roles that you can and can't do. Yeah. But on the other hand, when you look at the actual audiences of Facebook and Twitter, I mean, I do a lot of marketing to moms and brands, food brands, that type of thing. We did some focus groups. And in our heads, we're all in this industry. We live on Twitter. We know it. We know what's going on. These moms, they don't, no, I don't, I don't do Twitter. You know, we did a, for example, we did a promotion for Johnny Eagle. We did a Twitter promotion, and on Facebook, people were up in arms. Why aren't you doing this on Facebook? I hate Twitter. I'm not doing it on and Twitter. And yet, if you were to have done it on Facebook, you would have had a Twitter crowd do the same thing. Right, exactly. <laughs> so I just think it's really important to kind of think about who your audience is and where are they in the social world because, you know, I think uh, it's perceived by some people at Twitter to be a little bit more involved and a little bit more difficult than Facebook. So I think, you know, when you're putting marketing plans together, you're thinking about who you're going to outreach to. It's really important to think, who is that end user and, and where are they in the social world? So mm -hmm. one of the other nice things I know, um, and I know this through, my, my husband does the Russell Mayhem show. His tweets are linked through his Facebook. So all he does is tweet and it automatically goes to Facebook. So it's covering both. You really love to talk. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Seriously. I'm going to let you know. The hand does not, you know, dictate that you have to call on me right now. It's just an instantaneous. I'm sorry. Uh, no. Oh, Jesus. Uh, no, go ahead. No, I'm sorry. Oh, you're not speechless. No, I... No, I had, I had, I had something. Uh, real, um, sometimes um, people, if you if you tweet a lot, I will 
we're done on Facebook then. I do not want to hear that. I go to Twitter to to see you. I don't. You're blowing up. You're blowing up my newsfeed. Please stop. I don't care about the tea party right now. I don't care about what you ate for lunch on Facebook at least. I I, I feel like it's more. It should be. I, I don't know. Maybe that's just personally me. But I, I, I do the same exact yeah. thing. Yeah. There was a hand over here. Yeah, but that's where you have to be conscious of how you're using your tools and how you want to integrate them. You know, be be um, <clears throat> use your social media on purpose, not by accident. <laughs> you know, like if that's jumping up your your Facebook, um, the folks who are using for it, you have to be aware of how you're using it. Um, like I link my my uh, LinkedIn and the Twitter things that they like feed each other. But I decided that whenever I started this, um, that I was not doing it from a hey, I want to meet friends and be social and fun. I'm the research director at Channel Four. I don't. I want to build a brand of um, people who follow me are only going to get real relevant information that is. Uh, about demographics or about Nielsen or about the networks or something like that. And there are certain, so I'm selective in what exactly. I'm working Exactly. And like I know that, um, like there, there are different, well, there are different media personalities that right. they're on the news, they tweet news. Mm -hmm. that's, that's solely it. I mean, they'll tweet snippets of, hey, this is, you know, breaking news sort of thing, and I'll see in my Twitter feed that this is what they're, they're talking about. A, that gives me information that I otherwise wouldn't necessarily have access to. I'm not home in time to watch the evening news. Um, I, I know what's going on. B, I know that that's a reliable source because it's not somebody who just floods the, the Twitter feed. Uh, and I think that as a business, that's a smart approach to take with it. Um, if your business is geared toward social, I think that that's where you would need to perhaps be a little bit more social about things. Right. It depends but on your use. And your exactly, it's, it's dependent upon your use and your purpose. So that's one of the things that I do like about it. Um, if you have a locked account, you mandate who follows your tweets, who can actually read what you're tweeting. Um, you know, so it gives you a little bit more control over that as far as it's concerned. Problem is, is that you're not essentially getting out there to meet people who you could essentially network with because your tweets aren't open, they cannot read them, and then they wouldn't be able to, to follow you automatically. Usually, when my account was blocked, I would get requests because <coughs> they would do that follow Friday. Mm -hmm. And my friends would put my name in for, you should, you should follow this person for follow Friday. Every Friday, I'd have like 10 new Twitter requests. <laughs> like, seriously, okay. I don't know half of these people, because that was my <coughs> original goal when I signed up for Twitter was, I will not follow you unless I have met you. Because it was just one of those things I didn't want to have like creepy cyber stalkers. That or, was my big fear. Or the porn bots. I have an army of porn bots. Me and the ladies, <laughs> <laughs> we roll hard on Twitter. They eat up my every word, and it's amazing. I'm sorry, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's one of the reasons that I, I hated yeah. it. Um, since I've unlocked my account, like, again, for, for podcast purposes, I've noticed that there's a lot of bots that are following me. I'm going in through and you know cleaning up some of my some of my followers, and it's really you know you couldn't even get a creative name seriously. <laughs> you know, delete. It's it's just spam. Um, so do you just bonk the like whenever there's the thing people who follow you on Twitter that you're like, what is this? And it's weird. And do you, can you just block that and say I don't want that? I don't want to look at that anymore. Or Trying to think, I, I I believe that you can block the user. Mm -hmm. um, you can have, you can yeah, block, you can spam somebody. Yes, yeah, spam. I, I know that I've turned somebody yeah, off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there, there are different options available as far as it's concerned. I usually just unfollow and I make sure that if they you know follow me back, that I continue to keep it out. Yes. So going back to I'm, I'm sorry, I forget your name, but you, the young lady has three accounts. Do you think if you're in business, you should have multiple accounts, like personal? Honestly, yes, because there are some some things that I would say in a personal setting that I would not say in a business setting. If I want to have my personal account, I want to make sure that it's my personal account. Um, again, my husband does the Wrestling Mayhem show. He also has a multimedia business that, that he's getting off the ground. 
the accounts are linked to the extent that he has the accounts. People know that it's him running both accounts. But what he says under the Mayhem show is kind of a character that he plays mm -hmm. versus his business account is actually geared toward his business. So he's very professional. And he gives out information. He, you know, it's more concise. It's more clean than, than what his other tweets would necessarily be. But that's only on Twitter because you can't have multiple on Facebook. No, you cannot have multiple on Facebook, but you can do um, you can do business, you, you can, you can do business profiles mm -hmm. on Facebook. So I guess that would be the equivalent. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was just going to say something I found useful was I started out with a personal account on Twitter so that I could get a feel for it, start to understand the hashtags and the retweets and everything. And then I started the one for the nonprofit I work for, so that I wasn't jumping in and kind of making the organization look like so bad, like we didn't know what we were doing. So I found that that was pretty useful, and then I kept my personal one because I liked it. I had a lot of friends. So. You have a lot of friends. That's the nice thing. Yeah, I, it's just amazing. I am not on LinkedIn. I was wondering if anybody could explain to me like what the advantages, what you do on there. LinkedIn helped me get my new job, the job that I'm in presently. Um, there was a, it was just a connection that I had with somebody else, and since they knew me through PodCamp, we had connected through LinkedIn, um, something had come up in, in their um, profile that indicated, I can't remember now specifically what it was, it was well over a year now, um, something had come up on their profile of feed, um, there, there's a little link that tells you, these are updates, this is what people have, have changed, this is what they're doing. Um, I contacted them, I was like, so... You guys are looking for somebody new over there. Yeah, yeah, send you a resume. I had some interviews and got the job. Um, as far as business, I like to look at it as a credibility rating as well. Um, if people have a lot of connections and they, you know, that's one thing. If they have a lot of feedback, that's something else. Or recommendations. Recommendations, that's yeah. primarily the feedback I was talking about. What kind of businesses do you need now? Um, it's hard for a restaurant, or is it more like an independent contractor kind of thing? It varies. Um, I work for a law firm, and I know that some of the, again, the person that I found the job through also works, obviously, at this law firm, or she did, actually. I was essentially replacing her with what I found out later on. But um, she did all this stuff, got everything situated on the the page, she knew that professional people essentially go there. Uh, again, it's, it's kind of the Facebook for business to kind of, again, dumb things down. It's, it's a Facebook for business. Are there business pages on it, though, or is it just people? It's just people. Yeah, it's just people, like, next, next business network. Yeah, it, it, I can go through, I can search under, like, if I'm looking for a business name, I can search under business name, and if, you know, somebody has their, their business affiliation, it'll pull up through that information. If it's a name of somebody that I actually know, I can go ahead and, and, and do that. Um, but there's pos also groups on, on LinkedIn. Yes. Which is helpful too. Like if you want to look like in a restaurant group and you can start discussions. So you're talking with people that are in the industry with what they're doing and you know, if you're looking for some band to come and like play at, at a, a restaurant or a bar or whatever, like that discussion group or that group, it's kind of everyone of like mine, so it's kind of a helpful tool. There's a social media group in LinkedIn that yeah. is extremely active, maybe too active, because I'm on about a few of them. It's kind of just blown up my inbox with links. Okay, social media this, set to that, social media set to that. I'm like, all right, all right. Yeah. But it's it's good content. And what I've also found is when you start to follow people, people that actually sound like they know what they're talking about, of course there's going to be some, oh yeah, I had you know, tuna center for lunch, but then there's the others that really have good content. Like one subject was... Um, how do you charge uh, for social media services? And then there's a big, huge 30 thread comment discussion about that. So there is some definite good content on there through LinkedIn. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's something much like any other form of social media. I, I think that you just need to kind of go in there, check it out, see if it works for you. It may or may not. Um, you know, we don't like Twitter over here. We don't like LinkedIn over here. That's fine. I mean, every individual person is, is their own. It's the only one I've really used. I just started getting into Twitter. I mean, I've kind of been offline for a few years, but LinkedIn worked great as referring to old colleagues and old businesses I've worked at and getting referrals and getting work. And, yes. and it's, it's all been people I've worked with saying, hey, I'll connect with you and get the updates, email to you. Like, oh, I'm speaking in this town. 
where I'm traveling here so you can meet up with people that you and then they have the recommendations so people recommend you. Yes. So like I've been recommended as a program worker for for, for, for stuff like what work for which helped me get some new jobs and work. I would agree. Okay, so this is kind of an open question for everyone. I understand LinkedIn is a personal thing. Um, I'm not a big fan of it, whatever. I'm, I'm not really big into that. I love Twitter and Facebook. For our organization, our chairman of the board is obsessed with it. So he made me start like a group for our organization. Does anyone, like, what do I do with this group? Like, I have no, he's like, why aren't you ever doing, he's like, I don't care how many Twitter followers you have. Why aren't you doing anything with group? I'm like, I don't know what to do because I feel like I'm just repeating myself over and over. And a lot of our followers are the same. And I don't want to post the same thing on Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter. So I, I mix up what we post on Twitter and Facebook, like, this based is on the audience. Yeah. But I have no idea what to do with LinkedIn. What did he want of LinkedIn account? What were his goals with it? He didn't really have, I don't think he had one. He's just like, he I'm always somebody on LinkedIn. LinkedIn and, and it's yeah, and he's on it. And he gets, like, news from, like, other organizations <laughs> that he's interested in. And that's what, I think that's what he wants. But I just wanted to know if there's one. What has could you make LinkedIn sort of his voice? To that audience and That's make it exclusively yeah. through LinkedIn versus the other ones, I since like it is more professional too. That is a good idea. That's why we're here. Yes, thank you. Yes, go ahead. So, so I feel no, bad now. You made me feel bad. Now I don't even. Oh, do sorry, not apologize. This um, is what this is about. <laughs> I just, I just have two things. Um, before the LinkedIn conversation, um, they were talking about, uh, you know, personal based on business. Um, I urge individuals uh, when they go back to uh, try to instate a. Uh, to include, um, you know, social outlets into a privacy policy or private—is that right? Privacy. It's all good name. Yeah, you know, you know, you have okay already. You, you know, you signed an agreement to utilize, you know, your workstation. You're not going to look up porn or play Farmville for eight hours a day. But in addition, though, there's—I mean, I, I wrote an article. There, are, you go to Google, type in Facebook firing. There are. Um, ton of people that have been fired by by kind of in this weird gray area by talking about their job through these social media outlets and I, I, I mean I, I equated it in an article to you know no I didn't yes I did um, you know you, you have to know that once it's out there it's out there so you have to be sure even though it's it's your personal one I mean a lot of people on social media even state on like even on their Twitter, you know, in their little bio, mm -hmm. you know, these views are my own, even though I, you know, work for so and so. You, I mean, you still have to be careful because mm -hmm. I think a lot of people get very comfortable in that setting and think, you know, I can do whatever, I can be this 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 fun, outgoing person, mm -hmm. and their job goes, hey Tina, um, we're we're not too happy that you're you know you're, you're showing pictures on Twitter about you know you know you dancing without a shirt on. <laughs> um, we're probably gonna have to let you go, and that's I mean. Yeah, that right. does happen. I mean, that's the, the scary part about it is people don't think about the repercussions that this easy access to social media has. I, I only have one. Yeah. I'm sorry. I just have one story. Uh, it, um, this there was an individual that worked out in L.A. and he was like a, a waiter, and he was tweeting about people that came in. He never mentioned the business, um, but there were celebrities that came in. They eventually, a celebrity that he tweeted about, that she was like a bad tipper, got in contact with the restaurant, found, found him somehow, since he, and he was fired. He was like, oh, even though he never mentioned the restaurant or anything like that, or even stated you know, what he was doing, just wow. then he was let go. You have to be extremely careful. Just think twice before, before you let that out there. I just have a basic question. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm using LinkedIn and I like it for professional purposes. Um, I, I just starting with you know Facebook and more social, and you know I'm thinking about replying to somebody that invites me. And, is this coming on the wall? What's private? What's you know public? Um, I'm still learning the parts. Um, when you want to respond to somebody privately versus publicly. The wall, I guess, is public. Yeah, the Facebook. wall is public. If you want to message through Facebook with somebody privately, um, there's messaging. Um, I'm trying to picture the Facebook. I've not been on Facebook in like two I weeks because it's a lot of people send the message. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You post it in like where you're typing, that goes on the wall. Yeah, I was about to like, if you know, someone <laughs> sent me a message and, I'm, you're, and I was about to put my cell phone number, I'm like, wait a second. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but you do have the option to hide your wall yeah. right? It's all going to be privacy. Mm -hmm. It's just it's set to how you want to set it. Regardless of how so it won't show up in the timeline when somebody else is looking at what the post is doing. 
You said all this stuff. It, mm -hmm. And you're, yeah, you have to go through sorry, and have to. Because everyone thinks it's private, it's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And Facebook had an issue with privacy. Where yeah. 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 So even if it's a private message, just be careful what you write. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, Got it. The one thing I was going to say is uh, even if it's in an email and you're sending it to someone that you know it's private, all this web stuff. Anybody can it's see. It's all out there. People can get to it if they want to. There's no, there's nothing priceless with just picking up a phone that you know it's not going to be recorded, or actually being in the same room with someone. That's that's the real privacy. Everything Although being else. in this room, we are being recorded. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then. Yeah. I think one of the first important things when you're setting up Facebook is to take a look at all the privacy settings. Um, there was someone that I I know pretty well who ended up having college pictures of her from a friend posted and you know perhaps 20 years ago what you did isn't what you would like to portray now so I would recommend immediately going into all your settings and making sure do you want to be tagged in photos and that means that anybody you know any one of your friends that might think this photo of you from 20 years ago was funny can tag you and then there it is um, Every single setting, do you just check out every single setting and it kind of walks you through it. It's pretty intuitive and I think that's what I would recommend first before you jump into this. That's a very good recommendation. Yes. I think it's good to set those privacy settings, but as we've been talking, you know, nothing is private. Um, there was a, a list, uh, I got basically a hacker wanted to see if you can grab that data and he pulled out like 300,000 some personal information, even though they have privacy settings. And you can, you can get it, you can torrent all this information. You you have their names, their birth dates, yeah. all this stuff. I mean, just, it, Facebook is the most thinly veiled, like the privacy settings, <laughs> as soon as they like update it, it's, it changes and your privacy settings that you set one day are changed within like two weeks. And, it, it's, and that's exactly it's, it. It's, yeah. Yeah. Plus the web pages are cached. Yeah, about your privacy mm -hmm. settings. Yeah, so you just have yeah, one. I mean, they do have marketing money for I just make it a personal. Ads side. Yeah. I make it. I I will say I've made it recently a personal habit where um, when it comes to just the internet in general, I don't type it. If if the world can't read it, if the world can't see it, mm -hmm. then I don't I don't even type it. Because I mean, look at Gmail. I love Gmail. It's great. But even Gmail scans your your emails to see what you're interested in to market for you, market to you. And you know, I didn't realize that when I'm shopping on Newport News or Macy's, if a little advertisement pops up about Macy, I never make a connection until I start doing some research. Yep. So it's just about, um, like she said, you know, I can recall when I was in college, there was some things my sorority sisters and I did that weren't bad, but they weren't really becoming of a teacher. Exactly. And now that I think about, <clears throat> did we take pictures? And oh my goodness. We <laughs> <laughs> really don't take anything that's absolutely, crazy. Absolutely. Like absolutely. 20 years ago, it was okay, but now it's just, it's like, wow. Yeah. You know, the thinking of that too, I've noticed like 10 years ago when I first started my career, I noticed back then you would see lots of forum comments and there would be nasty inter interactions. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, like nowadays, you hardly see people being very mean or confrontational. They're more diplomatic because everybody can see the conversation. And well, I think between that and you have the option, like I know that I mean, WordPress is, is where I have my blog group. You have the option to moderate the yeah. comments on, on multiple different sites for different things. Um, even Facebook, if somebody puts a comment up there, you have the option to delete it. Well, and the, and the internet's gotten a lot much, even more mature since then. I mean, yeah. you know, if you're wrong, like, I was, I got on the internet in 92, and, and so when, when I remember when AOL came on, and all of a sudden we were all like, oh my god, the internet's ruined now, because all these AOL people are coming on, but, you know, <laughs> friendly social type comments as opposed to technical stuff, and, and, and so it's the same kind of thing, it's over time. It's gotten better, but yeah, we used to have flame wars and <laughs> trolls and yeah. stuff like that. Um, well, it's been a great discussion. Our time is, is up, unfortunately. But um, if you have any other questions, just flag one of us down. And this gentleman over here seems to know a lot about it. <laughs> <laughs>
Thanks for